My favourite thing about God's creation is the animals, and especially my baby Ralph. My favourite thing is snail. My favourite thing in God's creation is animals. My favourite thing in God's creation is the beach. My favourite thing in creation is my pet rabbit Boris, and also all this magnolia tree in my garden and all the plants in my garden. And I also really like the rainbows in the sky. Yeah. And yeah. Bye. We've come here to worship God today. But what is worship? Worship is more than just singing songs. We sing songs for lots of reasons. Worship is more than just telling God he's good. We call lots of things good. Worship is more than praying or reading the Bible or trying to be nice. Worship happens when someone says, because you've given me everything, God, I'm giving all of me to you today. And then they do. Now let's tell God he's good. And let's sing some songs to him. And let's give him all of us as we worship him today. everybody and welcome to the Lanterns Kids Church service for today. My name is Nicola and I am Alex and Natasha's mum and I'm here this morning at our very own local area of natural beauty, the Camford Sang. Now we've just started a great new series all about God's wonderful creation and how we can care for it. Last week we found out how through Jesus God created everything that we see. This week we're going to be thinking more about worship and how we're called to live a life of worship to God. But does that mean that we have to live our lives in song? Wake up, it's a brand new day. Wake up, it's time to play. It is time to go to school, it is time to hit the school, it is time to take Alex to school. Wash your hands, do 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 do. Wash your hands, do 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 do. Wash your hands, do 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 do. Wash your hands. Oh no, not that song! Well, no. Whilst as adults we do tend to call the sung part of a church service worship, worship is so much more than just singing a few songs. Although, when we do look at the wonderful world around us, we can sometimes feel like bursting into song. Worship is so much more than just singing songs, and Hannah is going to talk to us more about this later. So let's get started.
stories of the Bible. Creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, formless, and dark. But the Spirit of God was there. On the first day, God said, Let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. On the second day, God said, Let there be a space to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called the space sky. On the third day, God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with every sort of plant and tree. And God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the sun for the day and the moon for the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God said, Let the earth make every sort of animal. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to have babies of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, to be like us. So God created man in his own image. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man, and a man became alive. Then he saw that the man needed a helper, so God put man into a deep sleep. And while he slept, God took one of the man's ribs. Then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Hello. Hi. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and rule over it. Rule over the fish in the sea, Hello, man. the birds in the sky, Hello, man. and all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> then God said, Look, I have given you every plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food and I have given you every green plant as food for all the animals. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was done. So on the seventh day, God rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and said it was holy. verses 11 to 12. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest shout for joy. Hello everyone, my name is Hanna and this is my daughter Amelie and this is my son Gabriel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about worship. What is worship? This topic is so dear to my heart and I'm really excited to tell you about it. However, I wonder if you've ever felt like this. Thank <laughs> you.
Those are some things that make me say, wow. I wonder if you can tell me what makes you say, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty cool things. But I do wonder if you ever think that surely the biggest wow should go to the one who created it all. Surely God has got the biggest wow factor. And so I think, why don't we all, after three, say a big, huge wow to the Heavenly Father who created it all. Are you ready? One, two, three, wow! As we have such an amazing God, we want to show our appreciation, and that's why we worship. But how do you worship? I asked my daughter Amelie that, and let's see what she answered. How do we um, worship God? We sing, we dance, we pray. All good, all good. Well done, Amelie. That is right. Singing, praying, dancing, reading the Bible, spending time with God is a great way to show our appreciation to the living God. However, the Bible teaches us that the little things that we do every day, the choices that we make, those can be also our worship to God. I'll give you some examples so you'll understand what I mean by that. By appreciating nature and taking care of it, you show God how grateful you are for the amazing creation all around us. Loving your siblings might not always be easy, but God loves us all the same, and we should try to mimic that love regardless how we sometimes feel. By helping your parents with the house chores, you fulfill one of God's Ten Commandments, respect your parents. Just to remind you, one day you might be one and then this will become very handy. By working hard and making sure you study and learn, you are not wasting the amazing brain God has given you. By eating well, and particularly your healthy green beans, you show thankfulness for the body you have been given and entrusted to take care of. A bit of exercise never goes to waste. But above else, Jesus wants us to help people around us. This is one of the most important ways we can worship a wonderful God. So what have we learned today? We've learned that God is awesome, amazing, wonderful, and every other word that you can make up to say that he is number one. We can enjoy all creation, but must not forget who created it all. We've also learned that although singing, dancing, reading the Bible, going to church, and all that is worship, everyday choices that we make, they can be worship as well. 
And the one thing that warms God's heart the most is us putting other people's needs in front of ours. Today, we're going to pray a little bit differently. In the Old Testament, which is the first bit of the Bible, people prayed usually with their hands held high. It was to showcase their awe for their holy God. And today, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands like this. And we're going to pray to the wonderful God. Lord, Holy Father, we thank you for all that you are. We thank you for your creation, which is wonderful. Help us never forget where it all comes from. Help us worship you every day with our choices. Help us spend time with you. Help us become more like you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for our sin so that we may live and enjoy eternity with your creation. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Jared, how can we hear from Dodd? So, how can we hear from God? Well, sometimes we expect that God's going to speak to us in ways that are really normal to us, like a clear, audible voice that's easy to understand. And sometimes he does. But a lot of time, it's not that simple. There's kind of things in the way to make it a little bit trickier for us to hear clearly. Now, I know lots of people who connect with God in loads of different ways. Maybe it might be their artwork or just something creative they like to do. Maybe it's through reading the Bible specifically every day. Or maybe it's being on their own, so it's just a really quiet space to hear clearly. Or maybe it's when they spend time with other people and they hear God speaking through the words that other people speak to them. So there could be loads of different ways that you might connect with God, but it's different for everyone. I know for me, for example, when I go running, I really struggle to connect with God, but I know lots of people who find that a really important time when everything is quiet, they're on their own, maybe they listen to music, and that's when they hear most clearly. But for me, it's really when I'm on top of a mountain, in the middle of nowhere, miles from anyone else, that's when I feel closest and feel like I can hear most clearly from God. So because of our personalities and makeup and the way God has um, built us up, everyone hears differently from God and you will too. But it's through practice and trying out different things that you're going to find different ways that help you to connect with God and help you to hear clearly from him. So go and try a few different things out and see which one might be the best one for you. So you can see what God has to say to you today. I hope that helps. Wow, what an awesome message. So worshipping God is all about how we live our lives. We might worship him by singing songs of thanks to him. Or we might worship him by prioritising spending time with him, by reading our Bibles and trying to get to know him. Or by showing that we care about the things that he cares about, by taking care of others and the world around us. So to close, let's just spend a few minutes doing chat and catch with Father God. Now I love doing this by myself or with my children. I just find it awesome that the God who made the whole universe, everything that we can see, is ready and willing to sit and listen to us and talk to us. So find yourself a quiet corner. You might want to find a blanket or your Bible and find somewhere quiet that you can sit or lie and we're going to chat just for a few minutes. So let's start by telling Father God what it is that you love most about his creation. Tell him what it is that makes you go, wow. Remember to say thank you to him for that special thing. ask him what his favourite part of creation is. Ask him what makes him go wow. Finally, ask him what one thing you could do today as an act of worship to show him how much you love him. That's awesome. Remember to tell a grown-up if you saw or heard anything from God, a picture or a word or a song. My son has a journal and I have a journal too and we note down anything that we hear God say so that we can look back and remember those special things that he said to us.
Don't worry though, if you didn't particularly hear anything or see any pictures, learning to hear from God can take a while. So don't give up. The Bible says that God does speak to us and so we can trust that he will. We just need to learn to hear his voice. So that's all for this week. I hope you have a great week and see you soon.